introduce the person of eminence, Professor Dr. K. Muthuchelian. Professor Dr. K. Muthuchelian is a world-renowned biology scientist with more than 30 years of teaching and research experience at different hierarchical levels, including professor, head and chairperson, vice chancellor. Currently, he is serving as the pro vice chancellor at Dhanan Sagar University, Bangalore. He obtained his doctoral degree from the School of Biological Sciences, Madurai Kamalaj University, Madurai, India. Subsequently, he had his postdoctoral research from University of Ancona, Italy. He has been conferred with prestigious Doctor of Science in recognition of his research accomplishment on biomass research management and technology. He has been conferred with several fellowships from prominent foreign and Indian scientific societies including International Energy Foundation Canada, the National Academy of Biological Sciences, Paleo Botanical Society, Zoological Society of India, National Environment Study Academy and Indian Applied Association for Microbiologists. He has guided over 81 students for research and four scholars for postdoctoral program and 43 candidates have been awarded with a PhD under his supervision. In this three decades of research experience with more than 30 research projects with leading international and national organizations including IUC in Switzerland, ICTP Italy, University of Reading UK, EPA USA, BSA UK, Euroscience France, Third World Network Malaysia, the World Water Council France, the Global Mountain Biodiversity Assessment Switzerland, in Instituto di Agrario San Michele Toronto Italy and Nitrogen Fixing Tree Association Hawaii USA. MAB program and National Biodiversity Authority MOEC and MOEF and CC. He has published more than 220 research articles, 25 books, 42 book chapters and more than 500 popular scientific uh, research articles in SCI journal and magazines to attain his H index 23. Notably, he has authored four books of Uir Virimam, Biodiversity, the Current Status and Management in Tamil. And these books graciously was released by Honorable Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, former President of India, and His Excellency Dr. K. Roshaya, the Governor and the, Council, and the Chancellor Government of Tamil Nadu, widely appreciated by peace of scientists in the arena. Besides, he also involved in the steering committee in 12th State Planning Commission, Government of Tamil Nadu, and expert member in the Pondicherry State Higher Education Council. He served as the chairman of NACPIR team visits in many institutions across India and an active member for different panel and committees in UGC, DST, MNREC, MOEF, and CC. He received 40 prestigious international national awards into his career academic credentials including the first Indian science honored with the prestigious award by University of Ancona, Italy in 1998, Lifetime Achievement Award in the Environmental Science, Food and Nutritional Science and Microbiology, twice the Merit of Excellence Award, Eminent Scientist Award and Professor S. Kanayan Memorial Award, Tamil Nadu's Best Scientist in the Environmental Science by TNSCST, the Best Scientist in the Environmental Management by Department of Environment, Government of Tamil Nadu, and he was awarded as the best vice best vice chancellor award twice by the Indian Red Cross Society Tamil Nadu and consequently awarded with best Tamil book in 2014 for Uir Virimam and in 2015 for Nulagam Arivalagu Nulaiwai in Tamil the library a gateway to knowledge for the department of Tamil and culture government of Tamil Nadu he has brought academic and administrative reforms for vibrant administration and rigorous academic initiatives in his academic positions at various levels like Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Controller of Examiner, In Charge and Coordinator for the University with potential of excellence, a grant of 40 crores, Member Syndicate, Senate and Academic Council at higher educational institutions. During his tenure at Periyar University, in addition to creating a corpus fund of 80 crores, he established five new departments, six research centers, four constituent colleges and three government colleges. In addition, he has established several centers, cells including All India Civil Service Examination Free Coaching Center, Health Center, Women's Welfare Center, NETSCT Free Coaching Cell and Internal Quality Assurance Cell for the benefit of students' community. Further, he explored the possibility of establishing Meta University, the concept of benefit, benefiting the students and the scholars to utilize the facility from other institutions. During his tenure at Periyar University, more than 22,000 students have been benefited to the career counseling and placement cell. In the domain of introducing innovative frontier and academic programs and courses, Dr. Muthuchelian is in the forefront in the higher education learning institutions in the state. Indeed, he has a long-term vision for transforming the academic and administrative systems with mission, mode and approach. His work stands as a monument to the individual. Above all, he is a kind person with noble heart, ready to extend his helping hand to the needy at any time.
He has earned a lot of encomium from various people, professionals, colleagues and from the students also. It may not be out of place to mention here that he is the role model for the young scientist who aspires to reach a higher level. I now request Professor Dr. K. Muthuchalian to enlighten us with the knowledge. Uh, so today, as I mentioned that the, the answer from the, the remote village that what we have the climate is not now and it has an yeah, impact on the, the total the biological diversity. So the, see this one, you can see the blue beauty of the earth and you could see the, all the coloring, uh, the pattern inside the, both uh, globes. One, you could see that yeah, blue color, the yeah, red color, and then green, brown, all this, you could see in both it, at the globe. So this is a picture which was taken by NASA and see that these are the beauty of the earth and it means it has all the beautiful uh, the, the biodiversity panorama of the globe. So it has, it mentioned where it is, a, it has been, I mean shown that the, the ocean is there and that the forest is there, the landmass is there and altogether all you could see the variety of the ecosystem uh, in the entire global level you can see that and this picture was not taken by now it was taken during 70s during 70s or uh, i could say that even before 70s it was taken now all has been changed because of the the climate change see this englishman you could see that complete because of the what we are having that the temperature the effects we call the the global warming you could see the face of the English man and uh, see almost his nose and then the total the face not almost is a tone. So the Michael Jackson is even showed because of what the climbing you know, the global warming the effects or the raising of the temperature in the year which has happened. Don't think that only for the English man it will happen. It will also happen to our uh, Sreya also our Vijay our Amida Pachan and altogether everyone has the same scenario. See this, the picture, you could see that both the eyeballs are melting because of the rise in the temperature. I think soon, I think our both eyeballs will melt soon. This will happen in coming decades because of the, the climate change or otherwise called it the temperature rise in the, the earth. And another one, you can see that the fish, the fish fishing out from the ocean, you could see the both the the Englishman, they could not bear the, the temperature of the fish fishing out from the ocean. Almost it is in the, the melting stage. That means the high temperature will reach not only it affects the terrestrial and also the, the marine ecosystem and see that the boatman, they could not bear the, the temperature of the fish once after fishing. I think now hereafter, not necessary to bring the fish to the home and then to process and then you have to put everything and boil and then later you have to fry it or making the, the soup or etc. Now uh, once after buying it from the market just you can blow uh, from your mouth to the hot air comes from your your mouth will quite sufficient to boil the, the fish and then and then the cooked fish is ready. Only thing what you have is here you have to do is only to paste the masala. That's all. You will have the fried I think the fish. I think, see the making, now we used to, uh, earlier we used to make it, the full boil only in the pan, uh, in the stove, the LPG stove or any other cooking, the vessel we used to need that. Now it is all not necessary, no LPG, nothing, no firewood and all that. Just you can make the full boil yet without heating pan. See this, uh, the egg laid on the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the and then uh, they feel that in, in your vegetable are uh, the things and the cave and it has been completely fully boiled stage. So next is the, uh, the, the apple. The apple putting on the, placing it on the uh, table almost it's melted. So don't think that only the apple will melt and then all our goyava, banana will also melt soon in the coming decades. See this rabbit. The rabbit cannot, I mean, are not able to eat their own food carrot. So both, almost both are in the dying conditions because of the warming effects. 
It is next to the frog. The frog sitting on the rock, you could see that almost the, the color pigments almost is melted. I, you could see that in the melting stage of the pigments in the, the upper the, the face of the, the frog. Not only the frog sitting on the rock and then also it's sitting on the stick also will melt soon in the coming decades because of the global warming. And don't think that if you are using the uh, your desktop or mob I mean mobile or any other the material and, and then see that here almost your computer is melting soon. Such a metal, metal uh, complex and then the glass and everything is also having the effect to melt it soon. You could see that in that. So your computer screen will also melt soon. Next come to the your mobile. Soon your mobile will also melt soon. So don't think that I am putting mobile in my bag, in my handbag, or any place you have the bouch or anything, and that will all even the Android telephone, I mean Android mobile also will melt soon. You could see that because of the temperature rise in the world. And my own watch, this is my fossil watch I'm wearing now. This watch is also will melt soon. Such a metal alloy also will have to melt soon because of the rise in temperature. And think that how the temperature has a make effect of this metal alloy to melt. And then now next is the, uh, the all the statues. I think hereafter there will not be any conflict or the problem will rise because of the statues. So the history to melt soon because of the temperature or the global warming. So uh, these are all what I projected. Maybe it's all imaginary, but it will be a cautionary to everyone that the temperature rise is here. Yes, still a phenomena in the coming decades, in the even the coming centuries, will be able to face in the near future. So all together because of what means that climate change. So the human induced. The human is the, the main culprit of the, the climate change, which caused by the emissions of the, the greenhouse gases, which are mainly the carbon dioxide. You know that the main source of the carbon dioxide from the anthropogenic emissions of the the carbon dioxide from the fossil fuels, mainly coal, oil, and gas. These are the primary source of the, the combustion, which leads to the, the emission from the coal, oil, and the gas we call as the fossil fuels. And the secondary cause of the emission of the carbon dioxide is from the, the land use change, the clearing of the lands under the tropical the deforestation. So altogether, the total the greenhouse gases, so methane, nitrous oxide and troposphere zone, I mean ozone, which all have the energy and agricultural sources, which are all having, having in turn, will change the climate that is called the, the climate change. So the rising of the level of, of the greenhouse gases of this carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide and troposphere ozone will have a change in the climate soon. So this climate change also having a lot of changes in that which exaggerates the frequency and intensity of the first it will have a impact on the hydro meteorological the disasters which is main and this climate change can add the new disaster the risk also now we have been facing so all this drm includes the the seismic activity volcanoes while cc that is the climate change also address the gradual average of changes altogether in the the climate so now the drm and cc adaptation greatly then is overlap can strategically reinforce the, the each other. And what it means that have a direct effect that they know, we are going to see individually what happens uh, in uh, the climate change in later. The mainly what we have been focusing now is everyone, even from the school standards, I think now everyone knows that the change in the climate will have an impact on the sea level rise, the temperature rise, as I men mentioned, the change in the precipitation the rainfall and then other, uh, other than that we have uh, the natural hazards also which including earthquakes and the tsunami also so these are the extreme effects which have also had the effects and impacts on the uh, the total scenario of the, the global level so we have been now focusing more on the cities why because the cities are disproportionately contribute to the the climate change the climate being the climate change and what we record is the mitigation. Because altogether, the first the 
the population, I mean, more than 50% of the population who are inhabited in the area of the, the cities are they are going to face the first problem of the greenhouse gas, the gas emissions, nearly 80%. That's why, the I mean, all these things, the cities disproportionately suffer the impacts of the climate change rather than the, the rural areas and also the, the resources. So what we record is the adoption. So adaptation is most important. So cities are all are now in, in front of the, in terms of the what we required is the, the preventive action and the emergency preparedness when compared to the other the countries. So here you can see that the urban poor at greatest risk, you can see that. So what can the local government do all these things? You could see the pictures. So is your city a hotspot? Every city, every city in the world now become hot. So the vulnerability will be different to the consequence of the climate change in the, the urban areas. So what we require is the preparedness and the response capacity different the natural hazards in the urban sectors. So what are the, in quote, we call it the primer, it's cause for that main. So the hot spot exercise is, I think, and you can see that starts from the resilient to the, the hot, is in the direction of that. You can see the color pattern of that is mild, then mild, and then and then finally moderate, and then to the severe to the hot. So altogether, it has given in quote is the what the geographical location, the city size and growth rate. It depends on why it has been exercised more impact on the cities, and then total the governance section, and then disaster history. So altogether, what it has been influenced is the the I mean, required is the the city management the financial resources and build the, the conducive environment with respect, in reference to the, the disaster response. And then altogether we have this, a problem to the, the economic impact of the, the disasters. So the main is the focus is the, the radiation. So the incoming solar radiation is absorbed and earth the radiates in parallel to the air, again back to the atmosphere. And this atmosphere absorbs the earth radiation and finally, it has a warming effect we call it as the greenhouse. So this result in increased the average temperature across the globe, which in turn disturbs the, the natural ecosystem and change our climate. You could see that this phenomena is well known to everyone. So as I mentioned, this is the blue beauty. Now everything is changing. Where? So this is one best example which I like to mention here is a call is a methane cow. So it was first example with that greenhouse gas emissions has happened uh, to the area where the problem started in the, the Mexico and then are some of the regions, South American countries. And I think the people, most of the people have been inhabited in the area where more of the farming system along with the, uh, the cattle population in there. So you could see that and then uh, the, there is a cow here. And in the, uh, the, uh, the, the rural ecosystem, uh, in the Mexico and other farming areas and once they felt that was a suffocation of the, the oxygen inside the house and later all the people have come out from the house and then they felt that they could not even uh, they do the, the normal uh, requirement of the oxygen in the, due to the suffocation of the, uh, the, the, uh, the atmospheric oxygen and they I mean uh, the government has been the local government has been given the task to the scientists what will be the reason why the people have been suffered because of this, the less uh, I mean, availability of the oxygen in, in their in, uh, in and around the, the ecosystem. They found at last that it's all because of the cows, the cows. It's a very simple phenomena. They did the experiment. And I think every, I think every cattle, you know, they have problem. I mean, I mean, the digestive system, the phenomena that all the cellulose materials, once it uh, eat, I mean, the grass or anything, the vegetables, etc., and later will bring again back to the mouth and then reach you with and then bread. and then we will bring it again to the uh, the the alimentary canal for the digestion and then finally to the absorption. So during that process, a lot of methane, I mean, was evolved. So they find it that and this I think with the simple the balloon, uh, I think they I mean tied in their their in the cow and they could find that in the within four hours of the time and then. A single cow can almost fill the, the methane gas which comes out from the, the mouth they have been experimented. And later they found that because of the, the thickly populated, thickly populated animal 
house, I mean, animal uh, herds in that area has leads to the problem of the, the methane and that leads to the suffocation in that area and the later they dispersed. So this is the one which the methane has uh, taken a lead role in that. And not only that, the methane also nowadays has been released very near to the uh, the very, I mean, maybe the rural areas where most of the ladies, you know, they used to go to the snake, supposed to be called the snake house. Earlier it was, it was not the snake house, it was the, the termite house. It was built by the termites with the soil in and around that. And later the, the snake occupied that place. And most of the, the, the Indian, uh, the women, they used to go there and then they used to pour the, the turmeric and ginger along with the milk they used to pour. And they used to worship the, the termite house as their, uh, the, the, the mother of God for that. And that also now has been serious with the view that the termite the house also, supposed to be the snake house we call, also has the ability to release a lot of methane in and around that the termite house. So be care that and hereafter you should not go very near to them and that also is a serious problem then. So even many agricultural fields also when you are keeping open and barren, that also releases a lot of methane and we found in the many experiments in the Indian subcontinent. So altogether, these greenhouse gases are we call as the greenhouse gases, which leads to a lot of problems in the climate change. Number one, the temperature, I mean, yes, influence on the temperature. Number two will be change in the, the rainfall pattern, the rainfall frequency and altogether. And then we call it the precipitation. And third is the sea level rise altogether. So with all three phenomenal effects because of the climate change has the impact, a serious impact on the health. So first one, the health, no, all the weather related mortality, the infectious diseases, the air quality, respiratory illness, all will happen because of these the problems associated with these, the greenhouse gases and consequent the temperature rise, precipitation, sea level rise, that too. So even the chicken, chicken gunya and then many other diseases, what we have all now, all because of the weather related phenomena and it will come in the season. And then also we used to say that there's a specific, uh, the eye disease, or the, uh, the, we call it the Madras eye, that also will come in season and that virus will, I mean, cause problem for only a couple of days and then it will go. It's all related to the, the environment and the, the climate. And next one is the agriculture. It has also a serious impact on the, the crop yield, the productivity of the, both the cereals, pulses and all, and every crop, including the horticultural crops and also the forest trees, etc. And this leads to the changes in the agriculture and the phenomena and then water resources. And finally, it has a problem, serious, I mean, impact on the, the supply of the water, the quality of the water, and then the competition of the water. Even we used to say that if third world war comes, it will be because of the, the water. So this all has a serious problem of the temperature, sea level rise and precipitation. Even uh, the, the earlier, the lectures were delivered in yesterday, they meant for that the water is most the important and one way India is facing the two serious consequences of that one is a heavy flooding and then another one is the more drought. And so all these problems are related to the what you call the temperature precipitation and then other relations. Then third one is a sorry, fourth one is the, the coastal areas. So it also affects the, the marine ecosystem, the erosion of the beaches and then inundation of the coastal lands then additional cost to the protected areas of the coastal communities, communities etc. And then also has a serious problem in the, the bleaching of the, the coral reefs too. And finally, the species and natural areas where it has a loss uh, to the total biodiversity, both flora, fauna and including the, the microorganisms. So it has a serious impacts of the, the climate change on every part of the, the ecosystem levels. So this climate change is an environmental and developmental issue which threatens number one to the, the environmental sustainability and poverty alleviation and then it changes the, the livelihood of the poor people and then human health and then also the, the national and the regional security. So it also has been focused, everyone knows that it changes the additional pressure uh, to the entire the physical and biological systems and number one it reduces the the thickness and the extent of the Arctic ice and have been Arctic ice, even everyone has been now it has been focused. And then already 60,000 
the non-polar gases are in the reachy and then due to that the timing of the reproduction or the migration events occurs both in the, the plants and animals the length of the growing season of the crops and then species distribution the population more to that as, as i mentioned the pests and diseases also we have here uh, i mean outbreaks also have been i mean i mean notice here so all together as i mentioned coral bleaching too so the climate change is a very serious phenomenon with reference to the uh, from 1900 our indian meteorological the research station they have conducted a lot of experiments with reference to the current climate and variability and the first picture you can see that the surface temperature has been varied from i think you can see that all together and say what they concluded that the warming trend is 0 0.3 degrees centigrade per 100 years so that was the i mean the projection they made it and with the experimental data from the, the meteorological research station and what they specially that i mean identified that the significant warming trend uh, in the west coast and then in the central india and then also in the interior peninsula over the, the north east india and they also observed that the cooling trend also observed in the northwest india and some in the south india so even within an area of the global level a, a, a rapid changes we could observe in the surface the temperature levels and see in the micro condition we observe the uh, the temperature relation phenomena in uh, the madurai city south uh, the tamil nadu and here from 1940 onwards we could see that the temperature i think is increasing is is in a, like a, in a arithmetic ratio uh, up to i mean 2015 we measured that the temperature is progressively increasing that we measured that uh, even in a microclimatic conditions of the 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 south of tamil nadu madurai city so this is one of the best example for the local climatic changes and even the maximum temperature no during measured during the april uh, we call it the Agni Nashatra period we measured in 2000 between and 2000 almost 10 years you could see the lot of increase of the the temperature we could find two peaks one in during the 2004 it was high temperature reached to 42 degree so 42 42 degree is not the uh, the optimum temperature or the ambient temperature of the the madurai city earlier it was only maximum to 37 it was maximum 37 now i think we could observe that 42 so altogether the south india now is facing the the temperature as equal to the other the desert temperatures so next to the the change is the monsoon level i think variable trend in the monsoon level even every year we used to see that the monsoon rainfall is changing and then monsoons have been result in the drought and sometimes interest in the rainfall lead to the flood so all to as i mentioned so both are the phenomena which occur in the uh, north and southern part of the the india so what they mentioned is the, the increasing trend in the west coast, west coast north andhra pradesh and northwest india over plus 10 when plus 10 to 12 percent in the normal 100 years they observed and then decreasing of the the monsoon level have been observed in Madhya Pradesh and adjoining areas and also the northeast India part of the Gujarat including the Kerala in the, the western Ghats uh, to a level of minus 6 to the minus 8 percent of the normal 100 years so we could see that extreme rainfall events all over the India so altogether what they mentioned uh, have been observed in the, the couple of hundred years from that the increase in the the greenhouse gas concentrations the increase in the greenhouse gas concentration may lead to the overall increase in the the rainfall intensity by one to four mm per day with an increase in the highest in the one day rainfall over a major part of the indian region may be up to 20 cm per day so i think uh, this is the picture they have seen shown that now an, an astonishing figure I think is a very threatening to that an alarming situation to India is that we are supposed to be, I mean, we used to say always that Sarabunji. Sarabunji is the one of the highest in terms of the frequency and all together we have the rainfall. Even that area also now face a lot of problem and because of the various other the deforestation and then uh, the, the ship form agriculture system and finally leads to the, the poor in terms of the frequency of the rainfall in Sarabunji 
and now at their level has been decreased to very very low in the Sarabund area, supposed to be the world, the highest rainfall the region. So all together, it also has the other associated climate change. And when, one which I would like to mention is the, the one important is the forward shift of the animal and plant ranges. And because of the climate change, the animal and the plants are shifting from one pole to another pole. So that is the, the highlight of the, the climate change they mentioned. Of course, other, I think we have all known that. So this leads to a lot of, I think, the very, very the strange the phenomena. Now we have been looked and then the flowering. In agriculture, most of the agriculture cross species are early flowering. Uh, the flowering it also indicate that there is a lot of problems to the, the product, productivity level. And also now, I think the, the snow cover is decreased. Even our Himalaya, as per the, uh, the research, uh, the statistics telling that 20% of the, the glaciers are already, I mean, I mean, lost in the snow cover region of the, the Himalayan too. So altogether, based on the research, the areas, I mean, conducted with reference to the CO2 concentration and then related to the temperature and mean sea level, all these three phenomena, they call as the climate change, what they are predicting that in 2025, in another 25 years, the CO2 concentration will lead to four, maximum 460 ppm. In 2050, it will be maximum 640 ppm. In 2000, in the beginning of the next century, maybe we will reach uh, a thousand ppm. So now I think it's very difficult how how we are going to, I mean, respire. Is I think it's a very very question for not for us, but for the our generations. So these are the problem. You know that the early periods of the the independence in the 1940s and 48, and we had nearly 270 to 280 ppm of the carbon dioxide in India and during 80s it has been slowly I mean, progressively increased to 300 and now the present state that in the 2020 we have 400 ppm of the, the carbon dioxide in the, in the atmosphere. So I think how the plants are surviving it's also a question mark. How the I think all to because every plant has the, the trapping of this CO2 is at a level even we did some basic experiments how the at the progressive level of the carbon dioxide concentration with varying concentration, how the plants are adapting and how the trees are adapting, we experimented in our the laboratory. So I think this is a phenomena of the increase of the, the concentration. Uh, if the present con I mean, uh, trend continues that because of the use of the fossil fuels, that is coal, petrol, diesel and other allied products, definitely we will reach the in the next beginning of the century, 1000 ppm is sure. And I think we know also the relation between the concentration temperature. Temperature also, I think from 1990 have been mentioned. Now the temperature will project to 0 0.4 to 1.1 degree centigrade maximum, 2.6 degrees centigrade in 2050. And in the beginning next 2100, it will be 5.8 degrees centigrade. So I think the temperature increase, I think, is almost uh, a changing. And then again, the global mean sea level also, I think, as per the, uh, the, the prediction, and 14 centimeters in 25, and 50, it will be 32, and then 2,188. Even very recently, two days before, uh, the sea water intrudes uh, into the, uh, the Arabian Sea of the, uh, the Kerala. And almost the entire water, I mean, it will increase to that. And I think the level has become both the, the urban ecosystem and the, and the marine ecosystem almost in the same and because of the race of the, the sea level in that area. So even the temperature, what I mentioned in the, when I visited to the Euro and the Italy, in the northern Italy and then the Swiss, uh, Swiss and Germany and also when I met the so many, the Europeans, they said that the temperature what we have now is, is, is in, uh, they say that in other words, there's a grazy. They used to say that temperature is rising. They used to say, in other words, it's a grazy, is increasing like that. Even they could not bear the temperature of the, the normal 32 to 35 degree, they could not bear the, the temperature. So think of the, the our countries and the developing countries like India, 42 degree. So altogether, the reported ranges of the CO2 concentration are estimated with fast carbon cycle 
models all have improved. So because of that, the melting glaciers, you could see that in the Kilimanjaro and 2006, how it was, and altogether it has been no. I think droughts in Africa also, and most has been, uh, the area has been extending like anything and become desert. Even the lake thought, and I think there is no lake in that, it almost shrink. So these are the situation, and also the Arctic ice cap could disappear completely. You have seen in many uh, the journals and all that, this was projected in the, the Times London during 2005 of the picture. So these are the, the problem, I think everyone talking about the polar bears, and not only the polar bears, and also our own, I am going to give more the examples of that, even our own, the, the tropical, the animals also bearing the problem of the uh, the temperature and climate change. See, this is the one they have projected, the polar bear standard on a thin size, but it doesn't know when it will uh, fall into the, the water. So such a, I mean, rapid situation has rise uh, in terms of the, the greenhouse gases over the past 150 years in the, uh, the Arctic region. So the climate change, who is the culprit? Who is doing all those things? So main the human. The human induced the climate change is the whole reason and is projected to have I been mean, changing a lot. So what we are going to do that? So earlier all our the rural areas and that we have been we have many ponds, pools, lakes, and then all water bodies. Now all these water bodies now have been completely nil. Even in the cities also, there is no water. So most of the uh, cities now all the lakes and ponds have been occupied by the bus stands and malls and colleges and then also other uh, the malls. So almost now everything has been changed because of the climate and decrease of the water availability and then decrease of the water quality in many areas because of the, the problem related to the flood and drought. And then also we have a problem related to the hydropower. Many times we used to monsoon, we used to depend on the monsoon to get the hydropower that will be as a failure, only maximum in the, the Indian context, in the, even to the southern southern part of the India, we can get the hydropower hardly to the two to three months. Then rest is a question mark. Most of the power plants are it's still in the in the I mean sleeping conditions in the the hydropower engines, and then altogether biomass production in the forest ecosystem is decreased, and then lot of the problems related to the the vectors, as I mentioned the malaria, the dengue, including the chikungunya, and then waterborne disease. All these things all have been a serious to that because of the, the heat, stress, mortality, and which leads to the threaten the nutrition in developing countries and increase extreme weather events. All this happen because of it. I think now even our child now they are realizing all these problems. And also uh, my good friend Professor Armanam will endorse me that uh, I think the climate also has the they decreased the agriculture productivity. And as for the statistics, they are telling, are telling that 20% of the our production, our total the production of the cereals, pulses have been decreased because of the climatic change. Even though we have been trying a lot to bring that productivity is almost in a world lever in a forerunner. But in spite of that, the warming in the tropics and subtropics, which has the adverse impacts on the they are related to the productivity of the agriculture, yield capacity and everything. And not only that, the fisheries also have been affected. So altogether, the every ecosystem has been changed uh, in the entire scenario of the climate change. And finally, I would like to address here the climate change and biodiversity. How? So I think the first phase, I think we have seen that the serious impacts of the how the climate is changing and what is the phenomena of the rainfall what is the precipitation level and what is the carbon dioxide level and temperature, all that, all I think have a change on the biodiversity. So the biodiversity means what? The change in the flora, changes in the fauna and then microorganisms. So altogether it affects, climate change affects, it projected to affect all the aspects of the biodiversity which has the individual effect and then on the populations on the species distribution uh, as a whole of the ecosystem composition and not only the structure of the, the ecosystem and also it affects the function also. It changes the 
all the phenomena related to the productivity, primary productivity, photosynthesis function, and then also the, the cycling of the, the nutrients. So entire the functional aspects also uh, changed. We, we used to say that the biogeochemical cycling of the nutrients are changed uh, in all aspects of the, the biodiversity, the resources. So what we heard, we had a very beautiful forest. You can see that. And in the second picture, you can see that completely yellow, the flower, the cassia, uh, the, I mean, fistula, the flowers, you could see that very thick forest we had earlier. We had earlier. This picture was taken, not now, earlier. See that animals, how conducively, I mean, is they living with the, with the, with their, the better, I mean, uh, with the child, with the cough. See the birds. How happily I've been standing on the rock and enjoying the climate with the natural ecosystem. It is not now true. And see the monkey. How we have been happily enjoying the climate. I could see that all the heaven, the matters. See that. And even as I mentioned, the microorganisms. See, one teaspoon of the microbe in the teaspoon of the soil has the hundreds of the nematodes. We can have it. And then in one teaspoon of the soil, we could, I mean, I mean have nearly 250,000 the algal species, species. And in one teaspoon of the soil, we can have nearly 300,000 of the amoeba. In one teaspoon of the soil, we can have nearly 450,000 fungus. In one teaspoon of the soil, we can have the, the millions of acnomycetes population. In one teaspoon of the soil, again, uh, having uh, millions of bacteria uh, belongs to Caucasus, Facilis, and Spirillum, and, and Vibrio. So all these have been yes, biodiversity. You could see that surrounded by the human, human also. So we used to always say that the biodiversity is the, the what? The plants, animals, I mean, including microorganisms that also having one component of the, the biodiversity is the, the human. You can see that the whole my family here. So the biodiversity resources are very rich in India. We are supposed to be the seventh largest country in the world and then circumference of more than 15,200 kilometers and having a long coastlines in both sides. I think we have a triangular way that Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal and then Indian Ocean. All together, we have, in according to the champion and SAR, and we have nearly no country in the world, we have such a major forest types, 16 forest types, no other, even the Amazon forest. So we could not show such a, the diversity is there in the forest in India, and which is supposed to be in the tropical region, subtropical region. And we have 221 minor forests, and then having total forest area of nearly 75.18 million hectares of the land, 45,000 plants. Among that, 15,000 are flowering plants. We have other lower forms of the, the plants, which includes gymnosperm, fern, bryophytes, algae, fungal, and bacteria too. All these we have in number. I think we have nearly more than 250 genera of the, the flowering plants, which belongs to the some of the primitive families. And then we have very hot spot, we can say that the Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, and then also the Himalayan region. We are very rare, the, the largest families of the plants are worthful in that region. In all these regions, this belongs to the different number of the family and subspecies. And some of the species are, you could see that the other one, which are only in, in India, where there is no other in the world. It's endemic to only in our Indian context, Western Ghats. So in Western Ghats, we call as one of the, the 18 mega biodiversity of the world. So it starts from the Gujarat to Kanyakumari at a stretch of nearly 1,600 kilometers, having the area, total area of the nearly 160,000 square kilometers in area. So we have the highest peak, cool, Nilgiris, Anamalais, Palanis, Agastemalais, all these things. And then all these are the type of the, are the ranges, we have the different types of the plants, species and nearly Western Ghats alone have nearly 4,000 flowering plants and among that I think 58 of uh, these species are 
only two in investment guards. You can all see that. So here the endemism is more. They, we call that the phenomena called endemism is more only in the Western Ghats, more than 75% in the world. So all what I mentioned is in the theory. What we heard all mentioned, so 5 to 50 million of the, the biodiversity resources, what I mentioned, 80,000 species, 40,000 species, 50,000 plants belongs to the flowering types, all only in the text. We can read, but all now it's not the real situation here all has been lost because of the number one i could say that the man-made cause and then also by the the environmental problems like what i mean related to the the climate change by the pollution global warming ozone depletion so all together it has been lost so what we are projecting that even we can have the uh, the uh, problem of the war we can overcome in nagasaki and kurosima in due course but not lost the erosion of the, the biodiversity. So such a, I mean, species have been mentioned that, so what I projected that species once lost from the earth, once lost from the face of the earth cannot be brought back. So that is the situation. So the light, I mean, the loss of the biodiversity is neither habitat is essential for the survival of the species is destroyed, all the particular species are destroyed. So altogether you can see that all by the, I mean, man-made, action or for want of the some of the uh, either for the skin or for the, the task and so on so all together i think the african elephants is I mean, an example i think the population has been drastically uh, decreased and then nearly it was earlier it was one lakh and thirty thousand one lakh and thirty thousand elephants were in the african uh, the forest now only sixty five thousand so fifty thousand of the the african the elephants were lost because of the, I mean, the task. And then lions and tigers are being hunted. You could see that all the, the conveyor belt of the, the foreign Europe and then the other countries, our skin, our skin of the, the animals, our task of the, the animals. So I mean, and then all, I mean, all exported from here. So habitat was destroyed, all become extinct. So the extinct is because the man-made cause and then also the natural cause because of the various reasons. So the loss of biodiversity and within this period, according to the UNEP, roughly 16 to 20 million hectares of the, the tropical forest are being burnt. And then because of the burning activities, the, the rate of the deforestation is at the rate of 21.5 hectares per minute. 21.5 hectares per, I mean, per minute. And that's why we used to say that out of the total geographical, uh, I mean, area of the India, once it was, we have nearly 33% as far as, now we have only very limited to 23%. And even among the 23% of the present uh, forest cover, only 10% of the, the forest cover, which brings actual rain to the, our, uh, the rivers. So this is a situation. So all together, what you know, the man-made action, the gift of the pollution. So all these things not only changes the climate and also has leads to a lot of problems uh, in and around the, the urban ecosystem, as I mentioned in the earlier. So I think this is one, I think the, with the, the cough, it has come out from this one and it doesn't know that when it will kill. Even the last one month during the pandemic period also, a lot of animal population has been, I mean, in some way, or been, you know, been, I mean, escaped from the human action because of the no invasion of the human into the forest. It is happily living in the forest. So, in addition to that, a lot of problems related to the toxic chemicals used, pesticides used, and then various other actions. So, what altogether the man made action? and consequent to the climate change, now the species extinction. So nearly 900 vertebrate species have been extinct every 1 million years, during the last 200 million years. And roughly 90 species every century, according to the IUCN, where I am serving as a, an expert for the Southeast Asia, we have accountability of all these things, the extinction rats, here, the higher plants, one species become extinct in every 
27 years. Out of that, 75 birds and mammals have been already have been become extinct in recent years. So the loss of the single species is a tragedy. So it, it is a life is a the life of all those is a irreplaceable genetic resources. It's a storehouse. So extinction is an irreversible process. And when a species becomes extinct, it sets off a casket the extinctions. So the world biodiversity is under the risk. I think in the coming next two decades, I think we are going to show, I think all the species of our tiger and an elephant and then our lion and then our all the animals, we used to show as only the, the skeleton pictures of that in the, the area where the, the people used to meet in, in, in a park or in a, a pizza row and pizza, etc. So in the last the 400 years, 120 species of the mammals and 225 species of birds have become extinct in the world. So all together, is, I mean, I use them, as I mentioned, they have categories that what are the species are I mean, taken into the normal. So because of the all these actions, the climate change and the man-made action, everything, there are populations which are now under the control. That is a normal. There are some species which are, I think, whose population move into endangered category in the near future. It's called the vulnerable. For example, the blue sheep, the Asiatic elephant, and then the Gangetic dolphin. So which are all now comes under the, the vulnerable category. And then rare, the Asiatic cheetah, the pink-headed duck and tutu bird. And these populations neither endangered nor vulnerable, but and are they at, at considerable risk. So these populations are becomes now rare here. And see this, the Asiatic cheetah is supposed to be one of the fastest the runner in the world among the animals. And then endemic. So these species are endemic only to the particular I mean, area. For example, the Andaman, Andaman deer, the first one. And then next is the Nicobar Bijia, Bijia. And then Andaman wild peak. So all these now have been a very serious problem because of the various reasons. So how many species are threatened? So nearly 16,119 are threatened with extinction. Animals, 7,000 around. Plants and lichens, 8,000 around. Birds, I mean, one in eight. Mammals, one in four. Amphibians, one in three. Turtles and tortoise, 42 percent. Conifer forest species, one in four. The cycads, the cycadales, cycad species, 52 percent. So these are some of the ancient group of plants, we call the primitive plants. I think it's very, very rare to see all these things now all become very, very rare. So what they projected is, as of, as of now, 50 to 50 million biodiversity resources. Now I think so far only 1.5 million has been described. Even among the 1.5 million species described so far, I think, I think this list will minus it. I think nothing is there. So the day will come soon that we are going to see our banyan tree, our cycas tree, our ficus tree, all only in the park, like in the in the ornamental shape, uh, which I showed in the right side. So the stay is not far off. This will come soon to see all these plants. I think will will shown to our the generations only in the parks like this. So these these are threatened. So mammals 30, 33 percent, birds 30 percent, and when you start talk about this, uh, 30 percent now our the, in Tamil, we used to call the, the, the Chittukurvi. Otherwise, we call the sparrows. Almost the sparrows' population has been lost because of the uh, all the, the, the cell phone towers. All the, the, the electromagnetic radiation effects, almost we lost many, many species. Even the, the honey bees also have been threatened because of the, uh, the, uh, the electric tower and then also the, uh, the, uh, the cell phone mobile towers. So the amphibians, 29%. So almost every population marine species, fisheries, all have been threatened, affecting the seabirds, marine mammals, and other marine species altogether. So animals, come to animals, I think we mentioned, because of the climate change, I mentioned that uh, I think the person has the polar bear, and then also the, the penguin, the beautiful penguin, and then also the frog, full frog, all have been, I mean, now threatened animals, which are all in the, the danger. So in addition to that, the plants are also in danger. We mentioned what are those in endangered category, and the vulnerable category, and rare category, 
Now, almost 10% of the, the world is the vascular. I mean, uh, with having the, the xylem and phloem of the everyone having absorption capacity from the, the soil, nutrients, and water, all have been, I mean, almost is the So the resting, I mean, extinction rate is increasing and increasing like anything. And altogether, the ecosystem, that the ultimate one, is threatened by what number one by the, the climate change. So not only that, it also it serious effects to the coral reefs, mangroves, coastal wetlands, the remnant ecosystem, some other ecosystem which have been the restricted the distribution high latitude and also in the high altitude ecosystem. So the extinction is more, more, more phenomena uh, due to that. I think the best one, the international arena has been focusing is the polar bear. So it requires to live, a, a pack of ice to live. And then uh, it, it might eventually go extinct in the world, uh, in the wild, in the natural condition, in I think almost now, you could see that. And then same thing also, the sea turtles. It normally used to come to breed in the same island as their birth. But now it could not go extinct on some islands as beaches are flooded, or uh, I mean lost because of the other, other regions. So because of the rainfall pattern changes, it also has been changed. So the climate change is a conflict. It has a relation. So tens of millions of people are displayed because of this change and low-lying delta areas. And then even now the focus is that, and one projection is that soon some of the islands in and around the, the Indian subcontinent will disappear or will submerge in the, in the ocean. They are projecting. And even the Maldives, I think they already, it's now, it, it is again, I, I don't know whether it is true or not, they already moved with mean, the Indian government that they want space to live in the, the Indian uh, uh, the area where they want to move. If suppose the problem comes, uh, I submerge in the water. So they now wanted to live and they wanted to move. So tens of billions of millions of people are displaced uh, and then they're moving to anywhere. So the water shortages in areas already with water shortages in the natural, I mean, uh, resources depleted areas have been altogether. So climate change coupled with other local, global environmental issues can lead to the local and regional conflicts also. So the conflict later leads to what the climate change, although not only, as I mentioned, the plants, the animals, which are great, which are threatened, rare, extinction categories and all together but what about the, the part of the biodiversity human so the future changes in climate is inevitable if the present trend continues of using fossil fuels unless otherwise we find alternative solution for all these fossil fuels the climate i think definitely will change as i predicted that in the next coming beginning of the year we may reach thousand ppm of the carbon dioxide sure so what required is the adaptation and then the, the mitigation activities are essential. So what? So the poor countries face the greatest stress from the climate change. See that global warming which leads to first affect the, what the, the poor to the poor countries. I mean, uh, the third world countries. Don't think that only the third world countries are standing in the queue, but we are also standing next to them in the queue. Like queue in the cinema theater for buying the the tickets. So we are standing behind them. So this is the situation of that. So realizing all those things, we have so many commitment we made and then uh, the Equator Protocol, I think we met and then we have made yeah, all the signature for the commitment of the, uh, the concomitant reduce of the, the greenhouse gas emissions and then at least in, in the 2008 to 18, they men and 12, they mentioned 5%. They are also, they have made a, a flexible mechanism for the carbon trading, land use, land use change and forestry activities they have promoted. And then funding mechanism also, they have developed for attempting the, the greenhouse afforestation activities. I mean, green cover activities like afforestation or the deforestation. So what we require are to get the potential actions. So the potential action is the what? Number one is the energy efficient and conservation. So what we required is the, I think earlier we used to say that 
uh, having one bicycle in a house, I think this will be a pride in those days. And later, one small yeah, a bike, a small bike, uh, that will be, I mean, a bike or scooter. It's a pride for our Indian family. Then next to that, as in highway of the, the motorbikes, like Honda companies, and then other companies, they came. They, I mean, they have prayed for the, the Indian people. And then to uh, a car, one single car instead of the bikes. Now, every family, at least they have one car, sometimes maximum three cars for their children too. So I think all together, think of it, how much oil in terms of the petrol, either or the diesel, they consume and how much the carbon dioxide releases into the atmosphere. Think of that one. You won't believe that in Madurai city, we have taken a, a statistics that in every day, uh, nearly 50,000 two-wheelers, three-wheelers, four-wheelers and trucks, trucks are passing through Madurai city. Uh, and every day, 50,000 vehicles are passing into the city, 50,000. Think of that uh, small town of Madurai. How could it manage the, the release of the carbon dioxide from these 50,000? Same thing in Chennai. I think it's one of the metropolitan cities of the India. Nearly 5 lakhs vehicles. 5 lakh vehicles are, are all together. It is flying inside the forest, inside the Chennai area. Think of that how much the carbon dioxide releases in terms of the, the greenhouse gas emissions. So all together what we need is the, the efficient vehicles. The, I mean efficient vehicles and then reduce the use of the vehicles in Saturdays and Sundays. At least now, I think due to the pandemic, <coughs> sorry, pandemic situation, we cut short all the, the, the flying vina vina into the forest, sorry, into the, uh, the urban areas. So efficient buildings, an efficient coal plant, all together we need. So what required is the, I mean, shift to the coal power, coal power to gas power. So for want of the, the electricity and then the efficient mechanism is that I think CO2 capture and storage, we have to see the mechanism at the power plant itself so that we need and then the nuclear fission, the nuclear power instead of the coal power, we can switch and more reliable uh, the situation is the, the non-conventional or otherwise we call it the new and renewable, I mean uh, the energy that can be used from the either from the solar, wind, or the bio. So these are the three sources, I mean, including the, the water, the waterfall in terms of the hydro energy that can be derived. So that means we have to shift all those things. I think now the Indian government is taking a lead role. Very recently in the pandemic period, COVID-19 situation, uh, we have developed the, a huge area of the, uh, in Rajasthan and uh, Gujarat, we developed the, uh, the solar house in city inside that where the full power can be I mean, uh, derived from the, the solar the panels they were developed in the, uh, in the the desert areas. So what we require is a, the forest. The forest and agriculture soils should be keep for conducive, sustainable way. For that we need to reduce the deforestation plus the reforestation and then afforestation and new plantation and conserve the, the tillage activities. So altogether what we projected is that, so I think every year, at least we think of 2% of the forest cover. If we, I mean, I mean, start now, I think we will reach definitely the original forest cover of the 33%, at least in the 2050. So that's what uh, the, our projections are telling. So in altogether in the, the global level, the total area of the Australia uh, the land cover should be forested with the afforestation or the reforestation. Then the world will reach a, a level of the carbon dioxide to the original, the 280 ppm uh, in the worldwide. That was the projection they were given that how to sequester, how to offset the carbon dioxide levels in the, the atmosphere for them. So already most of the, as I mentioned, the car producing companies, they have made a commitment for the, the reduction of the emissions. Even they started in the 2010 onwards, most of the IBM, Ford, Shell, Toyota, all the car producing companies, they made and they modified their engines uh, that suit to the, uh, the reduce of the emission uh, into the atmosphere in the engine itself. So the mitigation 
of the global warming is most essential. One, as I mentioned, the conservation, reduce the energy needs, recycling is most important. They have to think of the alternative energy sources, as I mentioned, nuclear, wind, geothermal, hydroelectric, and solar. So these are all these one next also the so I think now the scientists are working on the how to already I mean I mean prevalent of the CO2 into the geological formations. So how to I think I mean the act I mean lead to the, the carbon dioxide of the various levels they were mentioned here. I think depleted oil and gas reservoirs is one phenomena for the, the storage and then CO2 in the enhanced oil and gas recovery and then deep saline formation either in the offshore or on the onshore and also we can use of the storage as CO2 in the enhanced coal bed methane recovery areas so altogether we have the four mechanism to store the, the CO2 in the, the geological, I mean, geological formation itself and, uh, and finally so the increased what we require of the current the population of the India, for example, 135 crores of population, what we require is you know, increased access to energy, of course, is a critical and later it leads to the poverty alleviation and economic growth. So climate change undermines the development and environmental sustainability. So what we require is the, the collaborative effort, not an individual, not an individual, not an organization. So it is a collective collaborative effect involving governments, private sector, the financial institutions, NGOs, and the research community. So everyone has to take a responsibility to compact the all the, the, the activities of the, the greenhouse gas emissions and that leads to the, the climate change. Now also the, the bank can also take a critical role in assisting the client countries that reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and then develop a, a robust market which can be reducing the CO2 emission and that can be worked and also there will be a, a cost effective and equitable the solution should be adopted but what we require is the, the political will. The political will and it is a model leadership is the required and all, all together for that. So already the India is lead in the entire the world and we have concomitant, uh, I mean commitment for the the reduction of the CO2 altogether, the greenhouse gas emissions in the world, and I think we are uh, taking a model in the entire country. So I think everyone has to take real uh, role in that. And so here up here, here no, see no, speak no, global warming. We should not. So world is in your hand. Thank you. Thank you for listening.